Gordon Newell. This is an abstract representation of a bird in flight carved from San Joaquin Valley granite. Take a few moments, quiet moments, listen for birds nearby. Do you see any real birds taking flight? All right. Uh, so let's see. So we've got a couple examples. Let's walk out into the middle of it, maybe. So one of the only facades that's been removed is above Bluebird here. This is the Crest building. Um, it had a, an aluminum square facade covering up the second and third floor. Kind of the same material as the B-Max here to the left, except it was large squares. I used to have a picture in my office from 1958 and it was already covered up. So again, this is a national trend for cities thinking they needed to compete with the suburban areas by being more modern and covering up their old fashionedness. And now we view that old fashioned as character, not a, not a problem, but an asset. So um, those floors are still vacant, uh, but they're uncovered. So now you can actually show people what's going on up there so that they can potentially become tenants. When you think about being a tenant, whether you're gonna live somewhere or have a really cool office somewhere, in a big city, you like to be above or around things that are cool. And while we're still pre-revitalized, there's not a huge demand to have living space or really cool workspace above a downtown that closes at five o'clock, right? So as we see this change, the demand to be up either working or living near cool stuff starts to go up and then as we get people wanting to live or work up there then the property owner can justify building an elevator uh, and then we can begin to put those floors back into use uh, similar over here another building that that um, you have this variety of uh, kind of goofy facades from t111 siding to ceiling tile to chain mail of some sort, to uh, aggregate that even spills onto the next building. You can go past this building and not notice that it has some really kind of cool architectural features to it. So as we pull this down, as demand goes up and we get these buildings filled with uh, interesting shops or businesses, then it would justify uh, getting people to live or work up there which brings more people per square acre down here and then hopefully getting a property owner who with some simple paint can actually make that architectural detail up there pop where right now it's all sort of a tan color so you don't even really notice that there is a little bit of uh, interesting architectural detail up there. Uh, similarly this uh, gray building over here property owner that I talked with that didn't even know there was a second floor in his own building because someone had taken down the stairs. But if you look to the left, there's a single door that people that were upstairs used to be able to get upstairs without having to walk through the shop. So there are little clues like that. So I could point that out to him. I could find on the ceiling where the stairs used to go through. We go upstairs and it's just like a twilight zone. They closed it and it's like frozen in time up there. But as they remove that facade, that could be a really cool loft space or again, creative kind of a business space up there uh, with people that would then support the businesses that are down here at street level. But lots of opportunity as things start to change and foot traffic and demand go up. Uh, what else? That's a very good question. There'll be uh, bike racks on every block, um, but I think that the, there'll be more demand for bike racks. Um, I showed the planning department one time 50 bikes that were parked out in front of Peeves, and that kind of blew their mind. Um, you know, they're planning for like two bike racks on each each block but uh, I think there'll be more and more demand and uh, if you go to other cities you'll find that um, bike racks can be art 
So um, as there's more demand and as we get businesses that want to accommodate their customers more, uh, you're likely to see more bike racks installed over time. Um, another question I get is about bike lanes, dedicated bike lanes. Um, and again, it's a space thing. There really isn't room if we were to have dedicated bike lanes, something else would have had to go, whether that's fountains or trees or parking. Uh, it was just one more thing that couldn't quite fit in there. But the narrowness of the streets and the slowness of the traffic, the things that we've done to slow traffic, hopefully means that bikes are flowing as part of the traffic, which again slows down the car traffic. Um, and everyone's kind of using the same busy, confined space rather than everyone having their own um, delineated space. It's not perfect, uh, but you kind of have to work within the space that you have. All right, we'll make the last part of this quicker.